Hello, this is Daniel, please, my name is Daniel, and after a while, I'm back here with another Minecraft video. If you've been keeping up with the latest news, you might know that Minecraft The Village and Pillage Update, also known as Minecraft 1.14, has very, very recently been released. If you didn't know about this, then... There you go. Minecraft 1.14 is now out on Java. And the Java part is very important because the Java part is what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Minecraft 1.14 server on Java. So if all goes well, we should be able to start up our server within the next 5 to 10 minutes. It's really that easy. If at any point before, during, or after this video you think you won't be able to get it done and you will never be able to get it done, then of course there's an easier alternative. That would be to use dedicated Minecraft server hosting, have people do it for you pretty much, and just pay them a small fee per month, which can go as low as just one buck per month. That is just nothing. But that's of course not what this video is about. We are going to be making our own Minecraft server for free but I still happily take any sponsorship, just, just mentioning that. But without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial. So because we're on Java, and I get a lot of comments from people that just can't get certain things to work, I always want to advise you to go on and see if you have Java SE installed. If you don't, then every file that you download that has to do with the Minecraft server or Optifine or stuff like that is not going to work because it's going to open as like a WinRAR file or a zip file, something like that, and that's not what you want. So be sure to go over to this page. I'll put a download link down below in the description where this page will automatically give you the latest version. And if I remember properly, you just got to download this Java JDK here. You click it and you go down here. Uh, select the operating system that you are using and for Windows, which is probably what more, many of you guys are going to be using or Mac OS um, Either go for the DMG or the EXE because it's easier and it's executable. So it's just easier, you know So once you've got that done, then you can go ahead and go on to Minecraft.net it's really that simple you go on to Minecraft.net or you go down below in the description because as time progresses this this post that is right here currently that says download Minecraft Java Edition 1.14 today will probably sink all the way down to the bottom I don't know where it'll end up but you probably get the point after a while it won't be up here anymore and it will be harder to find so I'll put a link up to uh, the server download in the description so uh, you won't have to go through all that so you can either click the post here or just go down into the description where I will provide you with a link to either this post or a direct download link to the server jar. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that, but I'll probably link to this uh, this Minecraft post. And what you want to do, I mean, this contains the complete change lock for Java Edition 1.14. You probably don't want to read that because that's not really important and it says nothing about creating a server. What you want to do is uh, go all the way down to the bottom of the page and go to get the release. Here's the client release, which will open up the Minecraft launcher, obviously. But here is the cross-platform server jar, and that is exactly what we need. So what you need to do is just click Minecraft server jar. Just click it, it'll start downloading, and it is a .jar file, so it is gonna give you a warning. See, just click keep. Then we are going to drag this file over to the desktop. And you probably want to dedicate some folder to it. So if you have a folder already, that would be cool. But you can also just go in here and just create a, a, a folder called server. It's, it really doesn't matter what the folder's called. Just drag your server file in here. There's a reason you don't want to get it up on your desktop is because once you run it, it's going to create a bunch of files. And um, yeah, you don't want those all spread all around your desktop because that's just messy. And you don't know where the files are and if you have more icons than than me which you probably do then well that's gonna be a mess so we're getting really close to actually running the server but before we can do so we want to create a file that would allow us to run the server with custom amounts of RAM because if we were to just run the server from the server.jar file very very little memory would be allocated to the server and it would not allow it to run smoothly especially not if you wanted to mod it or anything or just play with a lot of people at once 
So in order to create this custom file, what you want to do is just create a new text file. It really doesn't matter what this text file is called because it's going to be deleted anyway, but we're going to use this text file to save it later as a program that we can actually click and run. So this very specific command that you need to enter into this newly created text document will be down in the description. I've already had it set up here in this command text file. I'm just going to copy it and um, you don't really need to change anything about it. It should work for pretty much any system, any configuration because I guess anyone should have these amounts of RAM in their system. This XMS tag is for the minimum amount of RAM that you're dedicating to the server, which would be, for example, one gigabyte of RAM. And MX means max, so it's gonna swing between uh, one and two gigs. So what we're gonna do is save as, don't just save, because we need to make this a uh, batch file, which means that it's an executable file that Windows can run. So what you want to do is just call it start.bat for example and make sure that the safe type is no longer txt but all files. That way it's actually gonna start off as a bat. It's gonna actually save it as a bat file which stands for batch file and then you will actually uh, it will not only be the name of the file which would happen if we were to save it as a text file, but it would also be the actual extension of the file. It just means that it's going to work the way we want it to. So let's just save it like so. And there we go. You can clearly see that this is a different type of file. It is called start, but it has this different icon and it says that it's a Windows batch file. That's exactly what we wanted. We can delete this, this other one here. We can close these notepad thingies here. So what we want to do now is go into the server folder again. Ironically enough, I just closed it. I know. And then we can click start. Just click it twice. It'll load up and it'll start up the server. Now it's going to crash immediately. Something's going to happen. You won't even be able to read it if your computer processes it really fast. So yeah, a EULA file generates. What do we do with this EULA file? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You just open it, you read the Minecraft EULA, and um, you just state here in this part where it says false that you actually do agree with it. If you don't, then there might be a problem. You won't be able to start up your server. But if you do agree with the end user license agreement, I believe that's what it stands for, um, then be sure to change this to true, save it, close it and now you can start your server up again and as you may be able to tell we also got a server.properties file which is very useful because it allows you to change some very important settings for the server as you may be able to tell over here oh yeah this pop-up uh, you might get this if this is your first time installing a server which I think it is because you're watching a tutorial on how to install a server so all you've got to do is just click allow access. This will allow Minecraft, this Minecraft server uh, access through the Windows firewall, which is uh, critical because if it doesn't have access, it's not gonna be uh, accessible for other people. Now here it says done. That was really quick. If your computer is a little slower, then it might actually take a little longer, but that doesn't really matter. Just to show you that everything worked completely fine, I'm gonna start up Minecraft 1.14 and join my own server. Now do note that if you want me to show you how to play this with friends real easily, you should download a program called Log Me in Hamachi, which allows you to create virtual private networks that your friends can join, through which they actually directly connect to you. So if you have this server, you don't even need to port forward it. If you just want to play it with some friends that you know and that you can chat with, then just send them your Hamachi IP address, which would be this for me. But of course, you can't do anything with that by just knowing my IP address because you're not connected to my Himachi. I'm going to start up my Minecraft. I'll be back in a second and I'll show you that we've actually successfully set up a Minecraft server from Minecraft 1.14. So here we are, Minecraft 1.14. I'm going to go into multiplayer and add a server. And I hope this is going to work just like this. Um, this is not the way you should do it. 
but your friends should enter your Hamachi IP address. Or if you port forwarded your uh, server, then of course they should use your public IP4 address. So if you want a tutorial on how to do that, I might do that in the future. But for now, it's just if you want to play with some close friends that you chat with and that are also able to just install a simple program like Hamachi on their computer, you can just create a network, join with all of you guys and um, just use the IP that the Hamachi host has. So if you're the host of the server, then they should all use your IP address in the server address bar here. And then uh, colon 25565, which is the default port for Minecraft. There we go, Minecraft server. It's got zero of 20 players. That's kind of obvious because I haven't told anyone about this. And there we go. I have successfully installed a Minecraft server for Minecraft 1.14 on my computer. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you actually did and want more of these kind of tutorials, then be sure to hit that thumbs up. Let me know down below in the comments. And of course, if you want more of these kind of videos and just like my videos in general, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're about to hit 3000 subscribers for which I might do something more personal like a survival or a skyblock series. Haven't thought about it yet. Um, we'll hit it soon though. So I should think about it. But for now, I really just want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video. See ya!